So I'm kind of curious to hear what you think about the Tiger Woods thing. We talked a little bit about that and how mm-hmm. that sort of was like, wow, like Tiger and Nike, like that's one of the great all-time divorces, but maybe ultimately makes sense. But I guess to answer the question, I'm bullish on Nike, but I don't think it's a slam dunk, pun intended. Yeah. yeah. I think it shows how hard D to C is. It's expensive. Nike, I mean, they have money, they have resources, and they still struggle with a pure D to C business. So, you know, I see that on my end too, where companies try to build up their D to C business so that they have uh, first party data and they have more ownership and they can improve their margins. But then similarly, they tend to fall back on marketplaces and retailer.com because it's just so difficult. Uh, and also from a talent standpoint, you know, I, I don't think you can hire one person to run both. I think D to C is a separate skill set for marketplaces and retailer.com from the wholesale side of the business. And you know, that presents challenges in itself. When we think about Nike, you talked about Tiger Woods. Uh, they are making these decisions for as large as they are of where they've got to shed things and get focused and uh, ensure that they're putting the dollars and the cents and the ta- probably the talent, Adam, uh, behind where they need to execute in, in order to keep the company viable. I mean, you've got also so much more competition coming in. You have Hoka, you have uh, you know, on running, you've got all of these different um, places that are creeping in to what are spaces that they have tried to own holistically. And now layer on the fact that um, they've been such so prevalent in even like collegiate sports. Um, they're being you know prevalent in uh, professional sports, but uh, lots of other companies are just coming in and maybe even writing bigger paychecks to get into some of those deals. And so I think there's a lot of pressure coming in at Nike when you're the behem- you're the behemoth and you do have to figure out how you get focus. And so to me, the Tiger Woods deal just shows that. Not every company is an invincible and strikes a uh, hundred or bats a thousand. There's just a lot that they are trying to balance and they have to get focused. They should look yeah. at Tiger Woods' son. He's great. They should get on board with him. Well, he's not. He's not. He's not going to be with Nike. Um, are you guys familiar with with overtime? OTE. I sat next to at the lead conference last summer. I sat next to the one of the founders, I think, and CMO, and. So for the holidays, and like we celebrate every holiday in the Kaplan household. So like Hanukkah, Christmas, and some my kids are the beneficiaries of that. My daughter asked for an overtime sweatshirt. You got to check it out. It's this amazing concept that's built on content, but they've developed a league in Atlanta. And they're giving players opportunities to sort of go from high school into this league to go to the pros. And I forget their names, but they were like the fourth and fifth picks in the draft last year came out of overtime entertainment. They do content crazy on TikTok. And like, to me, it's these types of things yeah. that you haven't even heard of that are capturing market share. And, and mm-hmm. again, this is the problem with DTC. It's the fragmentation of it, right? It's like Walmart is Walmart and they'll be on the stage. But like as a small guy consulting and advising small businesses, like we didn't talk about this. NRF was considering Glossier and Casper as startups. Yeah, they're not startups anymore. Nike is, as is a lot, as are a lot of people that aren't in grocery or aren't in commoditized businesses or subscriptions or necessities, right? You don't have to have Nike, right? Yeah. You want to have Nike. And so when the brand image comes under fire, and a couple of weeks ago, there was a drop, and it was so interesting, from McEnroe has this sneaker with Nike, and my daughter actually has the sneaker. And they were dropping it with Travis Scott, right? Travis Scott has yep. the reverse swoosh. Yep. Yep. And I love the shade room. Everybody in the world should follow the shade room for pop culture relevance. It's so important, I believe. They've, they're amazing. Yeah. And all these people in the shade room were like, who's the old guy? Who's the old guy with Travis <laughs> Scott? And like, that's a Nike thing, right? So like, I wanted those shoes and they did sell it quickly. But then again, you, then you go look at the resale value on sneaker, on um, Goat. Or yep. StockX, yeah, like not much, it's like two hundred bucks. Like whereas Dunks by Travis Scott are, so I think that's like a barometer. Is like right. what is Nike going to stay forever, and do they have to sort of dial down and focus? And is golf worth it? And the answer is probably no. not. And it's probably not where they need to get the next generation, which is what they're thinking about too. It's a great conversation. We could probably talk for a while about Nike, but I think if the next place to go really is in what's what's Nike's organization.